Welcome to You Can Do It Too, a podcast highlighting regular folks who followed their dreams and made it happen. I'm Joan Hutchinson, your restaurant maven. I've been described as a risk taker, though I never thought of myself that way. My mom always told me I could do or be whatever I wanted as long as I set my mind to it, and I believed her. I ran a successful catering company that led to owning and operating a top 10 Orange County restaurant and catering venue prior to earning a bachelor's degree in business management and marketing. You know what I learned by going to school after all of that? You don't need a degree to accomplish your dreams. You need drive, passion, and a belief in yourself. You also need some caring folks who support you and believe in you. I didn't need a formula to tell me how to properly staff for a week. I needed common sense and a deep care for creating outstanding dining experiences for my guests. I've been coaching and consulting with salespeople and small business owners for the last few years and blogging with business advice. I just wanted to do more, to reach more of you. I decided to talk with folks I admire who kick ass at what they do to show you that you can do it too. Right. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Joan Hutchinson, your restaurant maven. And today we are talking self-confidence with Paula Maticek. With more than 20 years experience working for Fortune 500 companies, Paula has global experience improving systems, processes, and governance of the IT procurement vendor management function. And she's currently working in merger and acquisitions integrations. She's held a number of progressively challenging positions with global responsibilities in the financial, healthcare, communication, and biotech sectors. Paula has held positions with Equifax, Enterprise Holdings, Express Scripts, Monsanto, Morgan Stanley, and MasterCard. And she received her MBA and Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Lindenwood University. She currently lives in Kirkwood, Missouri with her husband, Jerry, and their son, Jack. Welcome, Paula, and thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, glad to be here. (laughs) All right. So I have to admit, I am more than a little obsessed with the subject of self-confidence lately. And when I think of someone who is full of it, uh, (laughs) self-confidence, I mean, uh, Paula is the first name that pops in my head. Um, And I was surprised to learn that you describe yourself as painfully shy when you were younger. Can you share first how that was and then how you built confidence and overcame that shyness? Sure. Um, Sure. But I would like to know something first. Like, why? What makes that me pop into your mind for the self-confidence? I'm curious. Um, I think you present yourself in a way that it's maybe the way you hold yourself, the way you listen, the, um, um, I don't know. I feel like just when I look at you, I feel like that lady knows what she's talking about. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not real sure. It's just like this aura about you. Oh, I need to use that better. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but you know, yeah, I would, as a young person, I was painfully shy and uncomfortable. Um, and maybe we're born to have all this confidence early and then we get shunned. I, I don't know. I've never really given that a whole lot of thought. Maybe somebody could chime in on that. You know, maybe you're just told not to do it and your parents, you, you know, you try everything as a little child. But then something happens. And, and, and I guess more also for women. But um, I was in a household, I was the youngest, and it was more of a shaming, blaming, and this wasn't my parents, really, it was more my my siblings, my sisters. And um, so I had no confidence, I had no belief in that I could do anything for that matter, I just didn't, I, so I was shy, I wasn't comfortable um, with funny. a lot of, you know, I mean... That's kind of how it works. I don't. I don't know how it works for anybody else. That's how it worked for me, <laughs> right? That's funny. My kid, my I being the youngest, also my mm. sisters told me that uh, they found me in the trash, and mom said they could keep me. <laughs> right. 
Right. I was adopted by my sibling. You know, my sibling. I had some more things. Um, But then, you know, then you go out and you do, uh, you meet other people and you do other things and you get feedback that's different from the feedback you get from your, your family environment. Uh, so working, and maybe that's why I still like to work. I re- I like to work. Um, and you get, the, but you get the feedback, and you gain pieces of that confidence as you go along. And, and let's take that as an example. Like I don't think you're just born with it. Like when you learn, when you get your driver's license, you are a little nervous behind everything you have to do, right? But give it a few months. And now you're speeding, which you didn't speed. And now you're, you know, you can read the the street signs that you probably never paid attention to before. You, right. you know, in a year from now, in a year, you know, you could be talking on the phone, driving with your knee, eating <laughs> McDonald's, drinking, whatever. Right? So it becomes, yeah. as you do it more, you get, you gain more confidence. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can start out and not, do well, but some people, and I think a lot of people, won't give it a second go. Mm-hmm. They just won't give it a second chance to do it. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying that I didn't. I was like that too. Oh, um, sometimes I circle back and go, oh, let me give that a try again. Yeah, I didn't do well. Maybe it's baking, right? Some people that can't bake and they try it again. You know, maybe it's just not for them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I there's the lady who um, invented Spanx. Oh, yeah. I can't remember her name right now. Yeah. She said that at the dinner table, her dad used to say, what did you fail at today? Oh. And they all had to come up with something that they tried and failed at oh. um, every day, which is, which is good because I think it takes away that stigma of failure and... Um, makes you less afraid to try because you have to try something that you're not going right. to do well at that you can talk about at dinner tonight. Yeah, we we talk about those, but maybe not in the same frame. We talk about things like that. Mostly mm-hmm. my son will talk about baseball and something he didn't do well. I, mm-hmm. There's nothing I can do about that, but listen. But I ask him, what are you going to do to help that or improve that or you know, uh, it's usually because he didn't hit as well as because he, he's a hitter. Um, so he, he makes an appointment with his uh, hitting coach, right? Mm-hmm. He goes to the, mm-hmm. he goes and practices a little more. I don't think things just, I think we may not understand how confidence or gaining your ability, like it takes a lot. It takes, mm-hmm. well, it takes some time. It's not just watching TV or going out to dinner or watching TikTok, which is one of my favorite things to do, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, yeah. now that we mentioned that, it's kind of interesting, like the TikToks or the Instagrams, you see a lot of beautiful people and they look very confident and they talk very mm-hmm. confident, but I think there's a lot of false confidence out there, yes. um, right? And you talk to somebody and you think, oh my God, they're going to know something I could talk to them and get this great information and you talk with them and you're let down, you know, and you're like, Oh, I thought they knew something. They really don't. Or, or they know that one piece, which is great, but the rest of their life's a shambles. And you're, Mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh, huh. I thought you were different. You know, I want somebody that's got it all together that can tell me how to do it. (laughs) Right. Right. And I think that, Probably the reality is that that person doesn't exist. <laughs> I think that's true. Because, <clears throat> because that's what imposter syndrome is, right? Now you're, you, you, so my brother told me all the time, you know what makes an expert? You have to read three books on the subject. That's the, just, that's the definition of an expert is someone who's read three books on the subject or five books. It's something very small. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and I think that, uh, those of us that have uh, a lot of experience in an industry or really enjoy doing something like your son is very good at baseball, would he call himself an expert? Probably not. Um, no. And, but he, he could teach, coach, instruct, train, right? And mm-hmm. he just 
but we all live with this little bit of imposter syndrome where we're afraid to say we're good at something. Right. You know, there's a, um, there psychology today says women are socialized to worry more about how they're perceived Mm. and therefore take fewer risks. And then there was an author, Olin Miller, said, you probably wouldn't worry about what people think of you if you could know how seldom they do. <laughs> Dr. Phil had a similar saying. <laughs> he used to say, or he used to say, you'd be surprised at how little people think about you. <laughs> yeah. I think those two things, like, so women are, are conditioned by by all the magazines and... Right. Um, you know, the, the fitness things and, you know, we're so worried about our self image, like right. how do, how do we look compared to, um, where men, it doesn't seem that men have as big a problem. I'm sure that there are many that, that do, kind of do, but, um, in general and, uh, according to the studies, women worry about that more than men. I also read another article, uh, what was it? Okay. It was written up in an article in Forbes. Even though women and men had the same average score on a test, they consistently rated their performance lower than the men did. So what they did was they had them take this test and then they set, took them aside and they said, how well do you think you did? The women, the average woman ranked herself 46. The average man, 61. Not surprising. And then they told them how they did on the test and they asked them and the same result, mm. even though they knew what their score was and they all pretty much had the same average scores. Right. Did you, <clears throat> did you ever read Sheryl Sandberg's book about uh, lean in? I don't think I've read that. I'm she she that. had a, and her, she, it was similar along those lines. And she talked about uh, like if there's 10 items on a job description, a woman could go, yeah, I have this one, this one. Oh, I don't have everything on number 10. So I'm just not going to apply. But a man right. would look at it and say, I got number one. I got number two. Ah, I can, I can learn the rest. And they would apply. <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah. So it's pretty interesting that, that it, that the way it uh, carries over. And I don't, we'd probably have to think about this a lot more, right? but it is interesting. And I do think women, and I don't um, care as much, but I think they focus a lot on things like how they present to the world, mm -hmm. what car I drive, what purse I carry. I really don't care much purse. I don't, I don't, <laughs> you know, um, what, you know, what trendy thing or how I dress or whatever. That is so not a concern of mine because I know that I'm not dressing for that other person. I'm not, um, I don't care about what you think of my house. Right. You know, um, but I think they focus on that a little too much in my right. opinion. Yeah. We do need to stop and hear a word from our sponsor. So uh, hang tight and we will be right back. I am lucky to have some amazing award-winning cheeses right up the road. Dora Artisan Cheese in Egg Harbor, Wisconsin offers small batch cheeses that have been winning awards for years. And in Wisconsin, that's some tough competition. You don't have to live in Door County to get these cheeses, though. Just go to DoorArtisanCheese.com and check out their selection. Their most popular is the Top Hat Cheddar, but my favorite is their beer-washed Gouda called Valmy. Check them out for yourself at DoorArtisanCheese.com. If you're an expert in your field, have a unique story to tell, or an interesting point of view, it's time to explore the world of podcasting with Kitcaster, a podcast booking agency. You can expect a completely customized concierge service from their staff of communication experts. Kitcaster is your secret weapon in podcasting for business. Your audience is waiting to hear from you. 
go to kitcaster.com slash maven to apply for a special offer for friends of this podcast. Welcome back. Today, I am talking self-confidence with Paula Maticek. This is You Can Do It Too. Um, I wanted to ask you, Paula, a little bit about uh, work because um, you made a big couple big transitions lately and oh, yeah. we um we talked you were you were okay, i gave you a resume earlier so you have some ser- you do some serious work mm-hmm. and you work for some big companies and you made a choice to step back a little bit and do some contract work which right. is a little, that's a big deal to leave the comfort of a job, you know, and a salary that, you know, and jump off the cliff and do that contract work. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. Um, it was very comfortable to be in corporate America, what I knew and the, and the security of it all. However, my, my parents over the years uh, were were ill. Dad had Alzheimer's. Mom had several other issues. Issue. I mean, my mom just passed, and she was almost 96. So she had a really good run. But when you get older and you want to live in your household, there are falls and, you know, managing two households, uh, you know, mine and hers, and having a son that was in all kinds of sports and trying to just have a t- typical normal life. Corporate America, when you are curious and you like to do things and you ask a lot of questions, they'll give you more to do. And you do them. I mean, I do them. I like it. I like it. But then it becomes a little overwhelming. And you tr- you have that problem with work-life balance. And as a contractor, a lot of times, depending on who you're contracting with, they may limit you to only 40 hours, which seemed like a part-time job at the time. And and the whole reason I took that leap was because I needed to have the flexibility with my mom, who was at the time declining rapidly. I really thought it was just going to be a real short stint for me. And it ended up being several years. But I got to I got to go into a lot of companies into different areas that I may not get that insight into right so i got to do things and also tell them the truth about ah. something well, what do i get to lose a job you know what do I, there's more out there right. i only need that, one that is cool you know so, <laughs> i like that idea <laughs> so but i did i did transition back um so i worked for mastercard previous to having my son i left when i had my son mm-hmm. I'm now taking care of my mom. My mom was declining and it was in, it was a year, almost two years ago. And they call me and I, which was MasterCard recruiter and asked me to talk to them about a job opening and mergers and acquisitions. And I said, I would talk to them, but I wanted a contract job because I needed the, I finally, I, I just told them I need the flexibility. This is what's going on. And they said, we will, We'll work with you. I didn't, by the way, I didn't believe them. I mean, it is, you know, because when a lot of times when you're in that stressful situation, they then want you to do all this paperwork to go on a family medical leave act. You're very busy. It's, it takes a lot. It's not that easy. Right. And you're in a crisis usually during that time. So I said, I really don't want to. But um, I took the job, started in February, and my mom passed in July. And they were very supportive and 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 great. I mean, it was great that they were take as much time, you know, whatever you need, and they were very supportive. So I, you know, it ended up being a good a good decision. But I was I was not going to take the job. And then I thought to myself, what's what's the worst that can happen? Doesn't work out. There's other jobs out there. I'll go back to consulting. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, you know, that takes courage. I mean, there's a lot of people that wouldn't have the confidence and would be too afraid of losing that job or stepping away from the job that you stepped away from um, in the first place. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't without worry. I mean, I don't want to say that, but you know, we only really need one job. 
right? People that are in the dating world, you only need one person. There's one, okay. you know, you can <laughs> try that one out, go. And, and, and there's many other jobs. I mean, I didn't, there's no company here at Mass, at, in Missouri where I am that I've left that I couldn't go back, right? It's not that. They have lots of jobs. There are lots of opportunities, lots of new things to try. You have lots of skills that can transfer. You have to know that your skills will transfer. Like, why wouldn't I be able to do that? Right, yeah. right. So, you know, I think that's it. You know, I'm surprised at... Um, when I, when you talk to people and you say, you know, you're so good at that. Oh no, yeah. I'm not really. Right. Well, we all are good at something. Mm -hmm. Everyone is good at something. Right. There is something you're good at. Um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether it is, we have a guy that I work with now who's really good at carpet cleaning. He has, <laughs> He, he is this very reserved guy and he doesn't move quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but when he cleans a carpet, it is the cleanest. And he's had so many compliments on it that he's finally believing it himself that maybe he's good at that, mm -hmm. you know, and you can see the difference in his posture and on his face when even when you tell him hey can you go in and clean that carpet he gets excited because he knows he's good at it right and and he gets compliments for the work that he mm -hmm. does so why 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 can't we be confident in these skills that we have it's just i just it's yeah. it's so sad to me it that is really sad but then yeah and then you have the op opposite end of the people that are overconfident with things that they're not good at, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. so, so that's, a, that's just this, another side of that same mystery. I don't know why we have that, you know, even though I, I think it's gained by interacting with others in your same field or your same interest or whatever that may be where you, mm -hmm. you learn and gain from each other. And then you, and then you realize, oh, gosh, people are coming to me now. You know, before I was the one asking you for how yeah. how does this work or how do you handle that? And now people are coming to me and I'm now giving out that information. So I don't yeah. think it's I don't think it's anything that's going to happen overnight. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the tips that uh, VeryWellMind.com gives mm -hmm. to build self-confidence is to start saying no which I find very interesting. That's interesting. But when you think about it, you decided that you needed to have flexibility. So you said no. Right. Right? Right. And I guess seeing the reaction of others and realizing that they're not going to go, oh, well, screw you then. I'm never going to talk to you again when you <laughs> say no. Setting boundaries is a smart thing to do. And uh, Right. And I don't think a lot of us are good at that, at setting boundaries. You know? Yeah. Um, it goes along with what I said earlier. If you're around and you're good at something, people give you more and more mm -hmm. to do, which mm -hmm. is fun and great. But there be there's a becomes a time that now that it's imbalanced. But right. you didn't set your boundaries. And now, now we're both in a bad situation. Right. Yeah. You know? So that, that's a skill that I'm still, I'm still working on, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can, well, it's not sometimes you, what it, Oprah said, you can have everything just probably not at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I like this quote from the magic of thinking big by David Schwartz. Believe it can be done when you believe something be can be done. Really believe your mind will find ways to do it. Believing a solution paves the way to the solution. Mm -hmm. I think um, that term acting as if is, is better explained the way that David Schwartz just did. Right. Um, you, if you allow yourself to believe in yourself and trust in your instincts <laughs> and say, I can do that, then you can. Um, mm -hmm. 
and it's a mind game that we have to play with ourselves. I feel like. I think it starts out that way too. I mean, I had, I mean, I had the same thing. You know, you start out, you're like, I, why are you asking me to do that? I don't, why, I don't think I can do that. You know, and then right. you learn bits and pieces as you go along and your confidence grows along with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it may take a while, but I think a lot of people, I think they fail to start or, or pick up again after they had a setback. I think it really bothers a lot of people. Or they don't, yeah. or they also don't get the feedback. You know, I don't know if if there's a lot of positive feedback that happens in the workplace as much anymore as it used to happen, at least for me, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And it wasn't like it was showered on. You know, you, you would do something and you would get the feedback that, oh, that was great. How did you know how to do that? <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't know how you knew that. Uh-huh. Um, you know, the, I just don't think that those kind of, I think you may only get the negative feedback. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not certain about that, but you see it a lot maybe in schools with the, with the kids and then you see it later on. And, and, you know, we all like being around that person that's positive and compliments things or says, Oh my God, I love that. And then, but we're not that person. We are not that same person giving that, those compliments out. And I do know it makes a big difference when people uh, give that feedback to anybody. I mean, people are usually surprised when I do it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm often surprised when they do it for me as well. Right. So it depends mm-hmm. on what it is sometimes, you know, like, Oh, it's interesting. I think, um, I think that that positive feedback is, uh, going to be the answer to what's going on in, at least in the restaurant and hospitality industry. Um, I think that 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 industry is learning that they cannot mistreat their employees anymore and that it they have to do better than not mistreating them. They have to right. appreciate them and they have to show Agreed. that they're appreciating them. Agreed. Um, and, and, and customers, though, customers, I don't know why they're so... I don't know what it is demanding or, you know, sometimes I think, why, where did you get that? Why are you, why do you talk to people like that? It's not okay. You know? Um, So again, maybe it's just the the positive feedback or even the correction when it, sometimes you don't even know you might be coming across in a way that's not very nice or you're tired or cranky or whatever it is. You You don't know. But I don't, I think we failed at some of those being positive. Everybody wants you to say please and thank you and be that nice person. But we, if you think about it, there's not a lot of people that do it. You are right. That seems to have kind of gone away. I mean, people don't send thank you cards anymore. People don't. We do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My son's, my son's expert at it. (laughs) (laughs) He is lucky that you are his mom, for sure. I tell him that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one, there's there's a couple of uh, tips for increasing your self-confidence that I got from Psychology Today, Ooh. saying don't compare yourself to others, number one, right? Um mm-hmm. Start saying no. Surround yourself with positive people, which we talked about. Right. One thing that um, one thing that I read was get more sleep. Oh, right. I think uh, I think that, I think that helps. Interesting. I mean, if you feel yeah. good, if you feel good, you're gonna do. You're gonna think more positive. You know, when I when I was going through all kinds of things and I wasn't sleeping and there's all kinds of chaos was going on. I couldn't. I really couldn't focus in a positive manner. I was not in a good place. So I don't know how you get, you know, if you're not in a good place, whether it's physically or mentally and that's sleep deprived, I don't think you can. You can for a while, but I don't right. think, I just think it takes a little more energy than your body is, is going to give you if you don't get your sleep or even nutrition. Right. Well, that's going to, you know, drinking too much or eating cruddy food. I think it makes a difference. Yes. A big difference. Yeah. 
And it's hard when you're not feeling good about yourself. It's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to eat right. It's hard it to is. make yourself exercise. It's like this whole cycle. So what? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. One of the things that I've heard is, uh, yeah, um, nobody wants to get up and exercise. You just do it. You just have to do it. Right. You just, And then once you do it, you feel good. Mm -hmm. Once you do it, you're so proud of yourself that you did it. Mm -hmm. So you have to make yourself do it. Right. Uh, yeah, that's what Mel Robbins says. Motivation is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you're not motivated. You just do it. You just have yeah. to make yourself do it. And it's hard when you don't feel good about yourself. But once it's you really hard. take those little steps, mm -hmm. uh, once you make yourself get out of bed and right. go for a walk. Right. Um. They also recommend practicing positive self-talk. Ooh, that's funny you mention that. I um, I make some goals every year, and I hadn't been on the positive self-talk for. I, I won't say it was. I don't. I won't say it was ever positive. And my like, mm -hmm. I, you might have a mental disorder if it's always positive. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I never, like, I never paid much attention to it until probably in my 30s somewhere and uh, recognized it and recognized that it was really negative, right? And again, not sleeping, not not feeling well, not doing things. You're, I don't know why, but for me, it was it, the negative self-talk was, it was just terrible. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. And on my uh, goals for this year was to get the negative out and the positive back in. Right. And there are, there's some, there's some really interesting thought processes that go along with that. Uh, my son even is participating in some about, uh, there was a, there was a breathing one about how breathing, you know, love and, and, uh -huh. and exhale, you know, Maybe it was hate, but I don't think it was that strong. I could read it. I could look it up and read it for you. But, um, you know, he put it inside of his baseball cap so that he ah. could read that before he before he went up to bat. So it was really interesting because it's really helpful that you learn to not be your worst critic. Right. You know? And it, I don't if I had the secret to that, I think I'd be rich. But um <laughs> But it, it is something we have to practice and first know that it's there and that, you know, that chatter in our mind mm -hmm. is not, it's not, a, it's not our friend all the time and we haven't made it our friend. Right. You know? Right. So I'm going to look up that fun little note for you Okay. Um, all right. on what it says and I'll have to read it. So it says, uh, inhale light and exhale heaviness, inhale calm and exhale worry. Inhale peace and exhale stress. Inhale love and exhale fear. And it says breathing with intention helps us to clear our energy and feel lighter and more energized. And that's by Natalie Southgate. Came It came in my um, yoga class. The lady read it in yoga class. I like that. And there's, a, there's also a woman, do you remember... He was very popular. Ooh, I'm going to have a have trouble remembering his name. But he did the first, I think he did the first um, book on self-talk. Um, hmm. I'll come up with his name. Anyway, his daughter, granddaughter, someone in the family with the same name, she came up with a morning coffee self-talk. She does a podcast. And yeah. she had a book. Um, which is very interesting. Again, if it's something that people are interested in, you know, the coffee self-talk, uh, she did that. Talk. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Um, well, Psychology Today recommends acknowledging every emotion, even the difficult ones rather than avoiding them. So mm -hmm. when, when, when a feeling comes up or when that fear comes up or the an anxiousness comes up that you go, Ooh, I'm anxious. But do we so know that? As, I mean, uh, do you, did, I think were you, you were you to, taught all these things? I was not, you weren't, I was no. not. 
I was not This either. was something that I think we all have to learn or understand what it is instead of just labeling it like, I have anxiety, I can't do something. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I don't but, know if I can identify all of those emotions. I, I think I'm much better at it now. I don't know. Uh, I think I know that one of my nieces has it works on that a lot with her little ones. Mm -hmm. um, when they start acting out, she says, hold on a minute. What are you feeling right mm. now? And they're little. Right. Um, so I think that's a good idea. You know, when you start feeling, you know, you feel that feeling in the pit of your stomach. Oh, right. Or, you, you go, uh-oh, I'm feeling uncomfortable. Why am I feeling uncomfortable? Right. What's happening right now that's causing me to feel uncomfortable so that you can name it? Because once you name it, it loses some of its energy. Right. right. Um, I mean, it's like anything else. The first time you do something, you're nervous, you know? I mean, in general. Right. In general. Right. And then you get go through it and you're like, okay, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. And each time you do it, and it doesn't ma much matter anymore. And you go to the next thing. Then you get another assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget uh, walking into a meeting I had with my business partners. And I had to tell them that we needed more money. Everybody, all of us, was going to have to put in $30,000. Mm. And I was taking all the financials in. And I had to, I like, Whew, I had to take several deep breaths and I'm like, I've got all the financials. I'm going to talk like I know what I'm talking about and I'm going to just tell them we need this money. Mm. I sat down and we went through it and I bit, you know, I just like bite the bullet, Joan, just do it. And I did it. And they all were like, okay, I see we need it. Cool. They were fine with it. And I, wow, right. oh, it made those next meetings talking about financials much easier once I got through it, mm -hmm. you know, right. and I realized that I, I do have the backup. I do know what I'm talking right. about. I did and my homework. I understood the assignment. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Any parting advice that we didn't hit on? Well, uh, I want to go back talk. really quickly. You talked about the man that had the, rug cleaning and how you could see the difference in his posture. And we always talk in our family about the walk of confidence. And, um, you know, those people that, oh, don't sit up straight, they don't sit, stand up straight. They're looking down, they're looking at their phone and they're shuffling their feet yeah. and, they're, and they're making noise and they're shuffling their feet and they look like they can't be bothered with life. And I, we would tell our son, do not bring home a girlfriend that cannot walk, that, that doesn't carry herself well. I said, please, I mean, something good, but there was something to that. And my, and uh, so my son plays a lot of baseball. We travel a lot and we had, he had to listen to a, we had, we we're listening to his book um, as we we're driving and it had something to do with like sociopaths or psychopaths. And they said, well, the way they pick their victims is their walk. Is their walk? Oh my gosh! And it's that that walk, you know, it's that walk oh. that you do not have any pep in your step. You don't have a purpose, you know. If you're gonna fake it till you make it, start there. Start there. Yeah. You know, start with your yeah. shoulders up, a smile, looking around. Yeah. You know, be conscious. I like that. I I've also heard um, it's not shoulders back. It's pull your chest up like you're a superhero mm. walk like you're a superhero so it's not like shoulders back but it, it they just naturally go back when you hold your chest up yeah and you walk like a superhero you're showing that yeah. s on your on your chest right i like that. haven't they done studies too that if you stand in the superhero pose for you know 30 seconds before like your speech that you have much more confidence yes for the entire day. Oh, I'm going to do like it. It's like eight hours. If you only spend, if you, it's less mm. than a minute right. doing the, uh, the power pose, mm -hmm. that feeling of confidence and people around you act like you have more confidence. All right. For eight, up to eight hours. All right. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> I'm going to give that a try this week <laughs> see how that works out for me in the morning. Should I? <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. It was today. fun. Thank I you. Just, I really, I just want everyone to believe, believe in their selves. Right. Believe Give yourself that, some um, credit. Yeah, because sooner or later, those who win are those who think they can. That's what Paul Tournier said. And I agree with him. So why am I doing this podcast? Because I know that we all have it in us to succeed. And my guests are normal people just like you and me who saw an opportunity and ran with it. Listen every other Sunday for new podcasts. Although I am going to go on a little hiatus for the next month as I gather new um new people to talk to uh so i will be posting and you can always see a past episodes on um your restaurant maven or spotify and anywhere you listen to your podcast so thanks again for joining me paula thanks for Thank christopher you. hutchinson for uh editing this and all of my episodes and make sure that you are following you can do it too see you next time